What is up guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel where I'm building a Lamborghini from the ground up. Again, it's not a real Lamborghini. It's definitely not a kick car. It's just American built. Okay, that was sick. I've been wanting to have an intro video for a while. I broke my arm, had a little bit of downtime, uh, so I was able to finally get one of those. Let me know what you guys think of that video. Do leave a comment. It helps out the algorithm and my channel. Today's video is going to be a continuation of my story, part three of building a Lamborghini. This is in a story format. I will be discussing and sharing the engine installation, oil system, coolant system, fuel system, a little bit of electrical, air intake system, maybe a little bit of the gearbox, and just a few things like that. So I got this engine, I got all these parts, and I bring it home. Honestly, I don't really know what to do with it. I've never installed an engine before, I never pulled or removed an engine before, and I'm gonna start out with a Lamborghini V12 and make that my first engine project. My resources and experience of any of this is little to none. So needed to do some research as usual, go to YouTube, get some videos, get some knowledge, gain some information. After uh, doing a little bit of research, realized I wanted to go with kind of an OEM motor mount setup. Found out that these engines, due to the high revs, they do vibrate. Deferring away from the OEM system or style of mounting these, you get a lot of vibrations. At first, I was going to go with polyurethane universal mount. I really didn't want to go with it just because I really didn't know what I was doing. Spit the bullet and paid Lamborghini's prices for their, their motor mounts, which I'm happy that I did. So I ordered the parts, had to wait six weeks to get them from Lamborghini, had some downtime, again, did some more research. I had the um, intake manifolds on there that was just an ugly yellow. I did, did not like the finish on them. The finish um, from Lamborghini was pretty poor quality, the paint. I think Lamborghini, you know, supercar, a lot of their quality control is, is really piss poor. It's kind of disappointing sometimes when you get parts. It's kind of like being told that Santa Claus isn't real for the first time. You think it's this wonderful thing and it's a little bit of a letdown. Uh, fit and finish on a lot of Lamborghinis isn't what you would think because they are hand-built cars and it's limited to the, the talent and ability of the person working on it that day. You can look at a chassis and you can see where a journeyman welded and, a, and an apprentice weld. They're different, um, which is, you know, kind of fascinating too. Got my motor mounts from Lamborghini, spacers and washers and, and all the hardware I needed. Called up a couple of buddies, just wanted some help. The drivetrain set up, it's over 900 pounds with the transmission and got it up on an engine hoist. Got it ready to set it in place to be able to do a mock-up for the motor mounts and the headers hit. Turned out that uh, my chassis is built off of an early Diablo, which the engine cradle is a little bit narrower. The Mercy Lago, widened their engine cradle a couple of inches um, so these headers don't fit. It wasn't too bad because I did have an idea of wanting to build custom headers for these down the road. It just was going to be sooner than later. Kind of funny story, We're pulling the exhaust manifolds off and we did not want to set the engine back down and and we're pulling it off and get down to the final few bolts and realize that the actual engine hoist mounts, the exhaust manifold is actually what holds them on. And so we were pretty close of just dropping that engine and not realizing that the bolts we were pulling off were linked to the engine hoist mounts. So quickly put them back on, put the drop the motor, pull the exhaust manifolds off the right way, put the brackets back on there and then hoisted it up, set it in there, probably pulled that motor out 20 to 30 times doing mock-ups. It was a 100 degree day. They're dying of heat. I'm just trying to get this thing done. You know, I can deal with the heat a little bit more. It's my project. At the end of the day, didn't get too much done. So they ended up taking off. And at this point, I was pretty comfortable at dropping the engine in and pulling it out. Finished my modifications to my motor mounts, set the motor in and 
drop the engine and just watch the uh, the chassis hold that engine by its own weight. The suspension sunk down. It was very cool. I sat back and just kind of kind of smiled and I'm like, this is pretty cool. This is pretty amazing. Again, from the perspective of I've never built a car, I've never restored a car. And, um, here I'm, you know, making my dreams come true. Um, just you know, working at it. So the engine is installed and I want to work on the oil system next. The Murcielago has a dry sump oil system. Its predecessor, the Diablo, had a wet sump oil system. There is a lot of advantages to a dry oil system and that is what I wanted to go with. I had a remote aluminum oil tank and so my thoughts were we'll just go down to Napa, I'll buy some oil lines and I'll hook this up. Went down to Napa with my oil tank. I said hey I need some adapters, these are the sizes I need, I just need some oil lines. They looked at that thing and they go what the heck is that? Is that from a tractor? because the oil lines, they're huge, they're massive. They go, we don't have anything even close to that. They suggested I go to Caterpillar and see what kind of oil fittings they have because they, they were so big. I was just like, well, that didn't work. That's not that easy. I went to Motion and Flow, a uh, hydraulic oil fitting company. They could build me a set of fittings and hoses for this, but it was gonna be expensive. So that ended up being a dead end. I went back to eBay, trying to make deals. So there's like three main oil lines. They're like six, seven, a thousand dollars a piece for these lines. I ended up negotiating, getting some deals. I paid way less than that. I don't remember what I paid for them. It was cheaper than having custom oil lines made and it was much cheaper than buying new OEM ones. I bought used ones in really good conditions, low miles. Didn't have to modify anything. Um, one of the other things, I did have to buy a complete new oil tank because there's a stainless steel strainer in there and I could not get that part. I think that part was like seven or 800 bucks new from Lamborghini. I tried contacting several people if they would separate that part from those tanks, nobody would. So I ended up just buying a whole new tank just for that one little part. Now I needed an actual oil cooler. Lamborghini wanted $2,000 for a replacement oil cooler. That's what used damaged ones were going for on eBay. Looking at the parts, found that they used an off-the-shelf set rab oil cooler. Looked at the pictures, I counted how many rows. I went to set rab, got their highest end oil cooler with that many rows, and basically got the exact same oil cooler that Lamborghini used for a fraction of the price. The challenge though was to get the fittings because the fittings for the Murcielago oil lines were big, they were massive, they're not common fittings. Made a oil cooler housing to OEM specs, just one online, looked at pictures of Lamborghini's oil cooler mount and basically just replicated them, built them out of aluminum, TIG welded it up, ended up getting a OEM dry sump set up to Lamborghini specs. Next, I wanted to tackle the exhaust system and start building headers for that. I'm an HVAC mechanic, fabricator by trade. So this was kind of uh, more in my wheelhouse as far as fabricating. I've never built headers before, had zero experience in header design. Why not start with a V12 in a very compact, tight location, level 11 difficulty. Did a bunch of research. Uh, I'm not gonna get into much of exhaust header theory because there actually is a theory to that there is a lot of trial and error there is science and there is no exact science but i did want to create and build equal length headers for maximum scavenging i got a formula for some rpm target range engine displacement uh, per cylinder i punched that in came up with uh, some numbers and built my headers tig welded them 304 stainless steel used 304 stainless steel v-bands had some flanges water jetted it was very difficult very challenging tested my skills headers are properly um, argon purged and welded it took me a while to build these headers after that i wanted to finish the exhaust I've seen a video about fab speeds exhaust has a Formula One sound, sounds amazing. I did not want to pay the prices, but I did want that sound and tone. Contacted Fab Speed, I bought the resonators. I think I paid $800 just for the two resonators. Built the exhaust system myself, the, the 180 degree bends. 
cross piping them or x piping them for added scavenging benefits 304 stainless steel argon purged had a uh, custom diablo plate uh, water jetted had diablo um, water jetted into it i uh, wanted a, a kind of a shotgun style exhaust tipped so the two lower exhaust ports those are just more for looks they do tie in and exhaust goes out i have no clue how it will sound i just thought it looked cool and uh wanted again stay true to the era not come up with uh, some rectangular exhaust tip i just wanted kind of a round simple design but yet a little bit more than a basic that is what i came up with i have no clue how any of this will sound or how it all worked it is done with research and science and engineering at a you know very amateur level so it wasn't just arbitrarily randomly done i am very very excited to hear how it sounds though but very very pleased with the how the headers turned out and how the exhaust looks um, it looks amazing looks professionally done and going to be more happier so the coolant system was a concern to me because Lamborghinis are prone to overheating and having cooling issues with them anyways. The radiators are in the rear and due to lack of airflow, they do overheat. So I wanted to really make sure I was pretty close to OEM you know, specs uh, as far as my radiators. I know who I am. I'm not smarter than Lamborghini. I'm not an engineer and did a bunch of research and got the actual sizes of OEM radiators and really try to find a replacement radiator for that. With uh, the radiators being in the rear, they're not the exact same radiator. You have a left and right that are mirrored of each other. They are a single pass radiator. They're pretty small for what they are. It's no wonder why they overheat because they're not very big. After all my research, nothing from like Mishimoto would fit. Contacted them, hey, would you guys be interested in building a custom radiator? These are my sizes I need. They didn't want to do it. Contact a couple other shops. They were north of $3,000 for custom radiators. I think Lamborghinis somewhere around $1,500 to $2,000 each for those radiators. Ended up finding a radiator that was like one inch bigger overall. And I think it's, uh, if I remember correctly, it was for Volkswagen GTI turbo, same thickness, you know, same size. And so basically the same radiator. I just needed to modify it. And these were two pass radiators and I used um, OEM aluminum water lines into them, had to modify them because the radiators were one inch wider. Uh, so that put the, the radiators in a little bit and also my engine is offset a half inch to oem spec one direction so that changed my alignment up a little bit bought some tubes cut them up welded new uh, 90s on there and got the correct alignment pleased with how that turned out that was all done in aluminum pipe and aluminum radiators built a aluminum expansion tank Early gen Mercy Lagos used off the shelf spall fans. The same thing with um, the late Diablos. They're just spalls, high end, top of the line fans. Bought a couple of those, got it in, and have a pretty much OEM coolant setup. Next thing was working on the fuel system a little bit. And one of the things that makes these cars so expensive, it's not just because it's Lamborghini, it's because there's two of everything. As I alluded to, there was two radiators, and it's basically everything's like two engines, you know, 12 cylinders, um, there's 12 of everything or two of everything. It's just kind of more multiple parts, and that's really one of the more expensive things uh, to these cars is just multiplication of parts that you need. Again, an OEM setup is two fuel pumps, and I really wanted to simplify the, the fuel system. So I ended up going with the Aeromoto fuel pump, just a basic fuel system, eliminating a lot of the emissions, the vapor, solenoids, and all that stuff. It's not complete. I'm trying to find some fittings for the fuel rails. Lamborghini uses some, again, some weird size, not common fittings. Very difficult to find. Might have to fabricate something up there. Built an aluminum fuel cell out of 
I believe it was 125 aluminum. Used a VDO OEM fuel sending unit. That's uh, pretty much where I'm at with the fuel system. I have all the parts except for a couple fittings to tie in. After that, I bought an ES Power battery, just kind of their workhorse. Bought a aluminum billet tray for it to fit in. Put it in kind of the uh, stock location. I think I ended up rotating the battery 90 degrees just for, um, I think it fit in there better, especially with that uh, aluminum billet plate that I had. You can see kind of some of the work in the pictures that I have right there. As far as the air intake, I basically just went off of Reed Performance's design. I built some pie cut stainless steel tubes and just kind of arbitrarily placed them in the air scoop area. One thing is that this is a Murcielago engine that is going in the Diablo body, so they're a little bit different as far as the, the air scoop areas. They're in the general area, but a little bit different. I just made mine just go basically straight in that area where the air scoop is and plan on building some type of plenum box to isolate the fresh air and, and keep it cool. First time ever doing pie cuts, just bought some uh, 304 stainless steel, chopped them up. I don't remember what degrees I, I did. It was like 7 or 15 degrees. I, I don't honestly remember. They turned out beautiful. I like the pie cut dirty weld finish. Use K&N air filters. And so that is that. Had some loose ends that I needed to finish up on this project. Ended up buying OEM sway bars from a Murcielago. Got uh, the rear one installed. Have the front one. Have not made the mounting brackets for that yet. Also installed the OEM emergency brake. Got a Murcielago steering column and steering shaft. Got that installed. Bought a OEM Murcielago uh, steering rack. Those things are those are not cheap, but again, I wanted this to drive and feel like a real Lamborghini. Kind of an interesting story. Uh, most people don't really care. The engine is VIN number 2000, and that steering rack came out of VIN number 2001. So that steering rack and engine were on the assembly line next to each other. Kind of interesting. The engine was ahead of it in the uh, assembly process in Lamborghini's facility. But now that uh, steering rack is going to lead that engine. So kind of cool. Part of the process and the story of, of these things. You have these broken cars that get wrecked. And to be able to take these parts that were wrecked and put them together. Make a functioning vehicle again is pretty exciting. So have those two numbers together is pretty cool. So I ended up um, installing the uh, gearbox. This gearbox is a 2006 Lamborghini Murcielago manual. It's an actual manual gearbox. It's not an a e-gearbox. Uh, contacted a buddy. He let me borrow his manual shift gate frame. And so I replicated that, made some mounts to it. Very difficult to try to get those with people trying to convert their Murcielagos to a manual. Those parts have been gobbled up. You don't find them on eBay. If they are for sale, they go for crazy astronomical prices. So that's why I just like, well, I'll just copy them. Do what I do best. I'll just copy them. And uh, thankful for my buddy. Shout out to Rod's Rides uh, for um, lending that to me. I have a Diablo shiftgate box. The Mercy Lago shiftgate box is extremely difficult to get. If anybody has one who's watching this and wants to sell it to me, let me know. I, um, I would be interested in a reasonable price. Most of the prices that they go for are way outside of my budget, but uh, I definitely am interested. So I do have a Diablo shift gate box, which is, uh, those things have gone up in price too. Um, they're not cheap. I might make some type of adapter mount and just utilize the Diablo shifter. That's still pending. Bought a OEM Murcielago climate control box. Pretty much went right in because this is a replica chassis. Firewall that I currently had in there needed to be modified. So I got that installed. You can kind of see why I say I'm building a Lamborghini from the ground up and that it's, you know, it's not a kit car or it's not really a replica. It's definitely not a real thing, but 
with all the OEM parts that I'm using, you know, from the drivetrain and everything, it's, you know, it's this, this car is going to handle and drive and perform like a real Lamborghini. I'm sure there's some other things that I had worked on that I'm forgetting. Again, this is kind of just part of the story. This video is probably not as entertaining unless you're a fabricator or interested in this. Um, but again, I just wanted to continue on with my story. I appreciate uh, you guys watching. Make sure you comment, sub, subscribe, like, dislike, either or. Do give some feedback, help out the algorithm. I used to get 1,000 or 2,000 views on my videos. Now, for some reason, I only get 100 or two. I'm not sure what that is. I probably like too many wrong videos uh, for YouTube's liking or something. And and my videos are suppressed. I, I don't know, you know, you get into, I just, we'll leave it at that. But again, thanks for watching guys and um, more videos to come.